Hello everybody, my name is John Hale and this uh, for this class uh, we're going to be looking at the subject of the forgiveness of sins. Now, uh, these are the uh, areas we're going to cover. First of all, what is sin? Then, who needs to be forgiven? Then, who is able to forgive sins? And then last of all, how can we be forgiven? So let's start straight in with it then uh, and start to think about what are sins. You see, I think it would be very easy for us to be tempted to think uh, that, uh, well, you know, I don't do really bad stuff. So do I really need to think about sins and, and having to be having to have those sins forgiven? So what I'd like us to do is to have a look and see what the Bible says about what sins really are. And I'd like to do this, first of all, uh, by looking at uh, an occasion in the Bible when Moses was called up into Mount Sinai to receive from God what we now know as the Ten Commandments. So Moses is invited up into the mountain and he's given uh, God's laws, which he should then take down the mountain uh, for, uh, and to give to, to God's people, the, the people that we know as the children of Israel uh, there in the wilderness. So that's what's happening here. Um, and I'd just like to give you an extract of the, the, the first two commandments of those 10. And it's here where God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make you for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Uh, those are three verses taken from Exodus chapter 20, where God was very, very clear uh, to, to, to Moses, and the Moses should pass this on to his people, that God, A, did not want the, his people to have the other gods, and B, that God did not want his people to make any idols, any statues, uh, that people might be tempted in time to come to worship. So there were 10 commandments, but these are the first two. Now, the dreadful irony is that while this was happening, at the very same time that this was happening, that, that Moses was being given these laws, the people were busy breaking them. You see, the people had uh, started to, loss, uh, to lose faith in Moses because he'd been gone so long. And so they called out to the, uh, the leaders that Moses had left in charge, and, uh, and they said, uh, we want to have other gods, you know, gods that we can see. And so with their help, Aaron, who is left in charge, took their, their jewellery, melted it down, and produced what's known as the golden calf. He produced then another god that, uh, the, um, uh, that the children of Israel could worship. Uh, not only had he produced another god, uh, but he'd also produced a carved image, uh, an image of a calf. Uh, and the people were then saying, well, the people were being told, these are your gods that brought you out of Egypt. Uh, so it was in absolute direct contravention of God's laws. Now, when Moses came down from the mountain, he'd got a few things to say to Aaron. He said, what did these people do to you that you have brought such great sin upon them? And we find that in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 21. Now, this is really helpful because it gives us the key to understand what the Bible means by the word sin. In this case, the people sinned because they did what God did not want them to do. They sinned because they went against God's commandments. They sinned because they they missed the mark of what God was asking them to, to, to rise to. So that's the, the Bible definition of sin then. It's, it's not what we might determine uh, what a bad thing is or a bad action or a bad thing to do. Um, no, the Bible defines sin as where we go against what God wants us to do. But it's not only that, though. It's not only uh, doing what God does not want us to do. 
but also not doing what God does want us to do is also classed as sin. So we have these words in the New Testament where James says, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So then, when we think about what sins are from a Bible perspective, well, they can either be doing things that God doesn't want us to do, and or they could also be not doing things that God does want us to do. And as a result, when you think about it, it means that all of us sin. All of us sin, either by doing things that God doesn't want or not doing things that God does want. So that brings us on to the second part that I wanted to cover in this podcast, um, which is uh, the question of, well, who needs to be forgiven? And the answer then, as we've seen, is, well, everybody needs to be forgiven. This is something that's, that's relevant for every human being that has, uh, who has ever lived, with the exception of Jesus, who led a sinless life. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the Romans, said, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You see, it's a very positive statement. It's saying that everybody can be forgiven, uh, but it starts by saying that everybody needs to be forgiven. Everybody needs to be forgiven because everybody has sinned. And the route to forgiveness then is through the, uh, the sacrifice of Jesus, as is mentioned here. Okay, great. So let's think about it then. We now can see what the Bible defines sin to be. And having done so, we can see that everybody, uh, everybody sins. So the third thing I'd like us to think about then is, well, who is able to forgive sins? Back in the Old Testament, way back in Genesis, we're introduced to a man called Joseph. Uh, Joseph. Um, was was a man who was shunned by his brothers, that was sold into slavery and uh, and was sold then down in into Egypt. But there in Egypt, God looked after him, and he uh, he did he did very well. In fact, he ended up in a a rich man's house called Potiphar, and the rich man Potiphar had so much confidence, so much faith in Joseph uh, that he left all the running. All the management of the house and all the things that needed to be done, he left all of that in Joseph's hands. And one day, uh, Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph, put him in a dreadful position, and uh, and Joseph uh, resisted her her temptation. He resisted her um, because it would be sinning against God. But look, this is. This is what he says. He says, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in the house and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? That's taken from Genesis chapter 39, verses 8 and nine. Now, of course, if he had if he'd gone along with her and slept with her, then well, he would have been he would have been wronging Potiphar, wouldn't he? He'd have been doing a bad thing to him. He would have been wronging her, actually, and he could even say be wronging himself. But the sin, he says, would be against God. A little later on in the history of Israel, in the chronology of our Bibles, we come to David, famous King David. And David was tempted. Uh, He was tempted uh, when he saw a woman called Bathsheba, who was bathing on the roof of her house. And he gave in to the temptation. Uh, He gave in to the temptation. He slept with her, who was uh, another man's wife. And in an attempt to cover up what he'd done, he, he organized uh, for that man to be put in the in the toughest part of the battle to make sure he'd be killed. It's a dreadful, a dreadful thing that he'd done to 
to take another man's wife and then to engineer that man's that man's death. And it took a while for David to come to himself and realize the, the magnitude of what he'd done. But when he did, and when he confessed what he'd done, although he had wronged the woman's um, husband, and, and although he'd wronged the woman and to some extent wronged himself, yet he, he felt that the sin was against God. He says this, against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And we read that in Psalm 51 and verse 4. And so therefore, from these two examples, you can see that Bible teaching is that people sin against God. I mean, they do bad things to each other. We, we wrong one another, but the sin is against God. And because the sin is against God, it is God who forgives. Of course, we're expected to forgive one another when people wrong us, and we hope that people will forgive us when we wrong them. But when it comes to sin, in its Bible definition of doing what God does not want or not doing what God does want, the sin is against God. And therefore, it is God alone who can forgive the sin, not a priest in a church. Well, on then to the uh, the fourth part of what I wanted us to consider, and that is, well, how can sins be forgiven? Well, there's a prerequisite for sins being forgiven, and that's this, being baptised. Being baptised, to be clear, as you can see from this picture here, is where a person confesses their sins, they declare an association with and a faith in Jesus of Nazareth, and the coming kingdom of God. And after having done so, they are completely immersed in water. Now in the New Testament, the apostles uh, made it a fundamental part of their teaching that people needed to be baptized first before they could expect to have their sins forgiven. So for example, it's Peter who said, uh, on the day of Pentecost, he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Do you see then how that baptism was a prerequisite and still is a prerequisite in terms of Bible teaching for sins to be forgiven? That quotation there is taken from Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. So let's summarise then what we've been uh, talking about. We need to, uh, after we've been baptised, we need to confess the sin in prayer, much like David did. We need to acknowledge that the sin is there and confess that we've done that sin. Next, we need to repent from the sin. So we need to make a conscious effort that, that we're not going to do that thing again, or we're not going to miss that opportunity again. And having done so, we ask for forgiveness in prayer. Well, what I've tried to uh, demonstrate in the course of this short class on the subject of the forgiveness of sins is this. Firstly, that when we sin, we go against God's commands. And we sin when we fail to do what we should. We've shown that we all sin and so we all need forgiveness. We've seen that God alone can forgive sins and that once we are baptised, we can seek God's forgiveness. There is a very brief summary of the Bible teaching about the forgiveness of sins.